Quick start for Erebus along with four flags. Strauss's place, square cat, goes right up and after them four wide as over-regulated tips in. In the meantime, center circle had to steady. Hot Rod Ride is next and Atenzione at the back of the field. Erebus hugs the rail and leads them around the first turn. Four flag a half length back in second, then square cat third, Strauss's place fourth, now three lengths off the lead. Then over-regulated, inside center circle, two in front of Hot Rod Ride and Atenzione. Six lengths covers them, down the back stretch they go. And it's Erebus in front by a neck. Four flags second, a length and a half to Square Cat. Over-regulated, making some headway on the inside of Strauss's place. That quintet covered by about three. Another two or so back to center circle, followed by Hot Rod Ride and Atenzione. Around the turn, Erebus, a neck still. Four flags second, Square Cat now forces the hand and quickens the tempo of the top three as they sprint toward the quarter pole. Then over-regulated fourth with three to make up. They're followed by Strauss's place. They pass the quarter pole and turn for home. Square Cat with a three-wide bid, over-regulated in the center of the course. Four flag, one from the rail, and Erebus, Square Cat. Here's over-regulated, who's had a good trip, and he's coming fast now. Over-regulated, very nicely handled by Mario Gutierrez, gets the money, wrapped up by a length. Square Cat second, four flag third, then Erebus and Strauss's place. They're in the gate. And they're off. Lux Royal Flush, very fast away from there. Big Sport comes through in second. Then it's half right third, and Smile For Me trails. Lux Royal Flush able to clear off, leads it by a length and a half. Big Sport tries to angle to his outside and does so now, and comes to challenge with half right, a length and a half off the leaders in third. And then Smile For Me trails into the far turn. Lux Royal Flush by a head. Big Sport presses. Half right, just a half length off the pace in third. And another two back to Smile For Me. They're coming to the quarter pole. And Lux Royal Flush trying to fend off Big Sport. A length and a half to half right in third. Smile For Me rallying but four wide top of the stretch. Lux Royal Flush holds the rail and the lead. Opens it up to two lengths now inside the final eighth of a mile. Big Sport second on the outside. Smile for me and then half right, a 16th to go. And Lux Royal Flush is dominating. Lux Royal Flush wins convincingly by three lengths. Big Sport second. Smile for me third. Half right was fourth. Nine seconds. Fourth race name for BUSD Food Service Ladies. Up next, the fifth. They're in the gate. And they're off. Master of Foxhounds comes out alertly. Lambo right up alongside. Those two share the lead with Dean Martini third, just in front of Vanzi. Ecrivan is at the back of the field. About five lengths covers them into the first turn. It's Master of Foxhounds at the rail, and Lambeau is about a length back now second. Then Dean Martini covering up Vanzi, and another three back to Ecrivan. Onto the back stretch they go. Master of Foxhounds establishes a clear-cut advantage of a length and a half. Lambo tracks him from second. Vanzi's a little bit eager along the rail in third. Dean Martini, fourth, three off the pace, and another two to a well-settled Ecrivan. They pass the half-mile pole with Master of Foxhounds and Juan Hernandez bounding along, opening up three on Lambo. Vanzi inches up at the rail. Then Dean Martini and Ecrivan moves up inside of him. 
Master of Foxhounds, a four-length lead coming to the quarter pole. Van Zee cuts it down to three. And now Ekrivan starts to roll from behind, has four to make up at the top of the stretch. It's Master of Foxhounds, Van Zee, Ekrivan outside of them. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Master of Foxhounds, Van Zee right up to him. They're head and head. And Ekrivan has two and a half to make up, shifting in. Van Zee, Master of Foxhounds come for the wire together. And it will be Van Zee to prevail. Three quarters of a length. Master of Foxhound second, Ecrivan third, Dean Martini fourth. Being guided back in. They're in the gate. And they're off. Very even start. Pyong Chang from the inside and good vibes only. Those two sizzle away and they've pulled four lengths clear. Flash of Genius comes away in third. Then Rantanen on the outside fourth, followed by Swiss Swoo. Dixie's two stents on the rail and a gap before to hiding the brick, racing well off the fence and last. Three furlongs out, good vibes only, takes the lead away from Pyeongchang. It's a gap of seven to the next flight, headed by Rantanen in third. Then Flash of Genius, Dixie's two stents is 10 off the lead. Then Swiss Swoo, hiding the brick far back, they turn for home, good vibes only. Young Chang running a big race along the rail and coming back for more. It's four back. Rantanen is starting to close ground, as is Dixie's two stents. 16th pull. Good vibes only puts away Pyong Chang, and it's good vibes only. Too strong. Good vibes only wins it by three. Rantanen second, just in front of Dixie's two stents, then Pyong Chang and Swiss Swoo. Post time in 23 minutes. Saturday, April 9th, will be the 85th running of the Grade 1 $750,000 run half and commander the last one. And they're off. Gregorian Chant broke out alertly, so did commander on the far outside. Here's Bran in the green colors, and Overdue, who broke last, is now within three quarters of a length. Nero is up and on the pace, too, and Commander, who broke well, settles at the back of the field. Down the hill they go, and it's Bran just in front. Has it by a neck to Overdue, the gray to his inside. Nero a length and a half back in third. Gregorian Chant has four lengths to make up, and Commander is in behind him. They're heading toward the quarter pole. And it's Bran in front, showing the way three quarters of a length to Overdue and Nero. Gregorian Chant is only about two and a half lengths off the pace, angling to the outside for the drive. And then Commander crossing the dirt, quarter of a mile to go. Bran narrowly in front. Nero running a good race up alongside. Gregorian Chant is now closing a length and a half to do it inside the final eighth of a mile. Gregorian Chant very confidently handled Cruises up alongside of Bran, Nero between those two. It's Bran, Gregorian Chant, Gregorian Chant, too powerful, and he wins it easily. Bran second, Nero third, Commander finish fourth. And dreams, it kicks off the Golden Hour double. 24 minutes to post. Your song of fire. They're in the gate. And they're off. Cheerful charm. Stumble. Did recover quickly. Naughty Evelyn is sprinting to the front. Song of fire up alongside in second. Then Renegade Princess third. And Cheerful Charm at the rail fourth. 
Whistler style is four lengths off the lead and ready at midnight at the back. Around the clubhouse turn, it's Naughty Evelyn just in front, about a half length. Song of Fire second, a length and a half, Cheerful Charm inside Reading Aid Princess. Then another two back to Whistler style, who's about five off the pace now and three quarters to ready at midnight. Down the back stretch they go. Naughty Evelyn, three quarters of a length. Song of Fire second, Cheerful Charm, trying to move up on the inside third. Then comes Renegade Princess, three off the pace past the half mile pole. Whistler style is next, ready at midnight. There's been no change in the running order. It's been Naughty Evelyn since the gate opened, carving out the fractions. A half length to Song of Fire, who now puts the pressure on second. Cheerful Charm, Renegade Princess just outside of her. Then Whistler style and ready at midnight. They pass the quarter pole and turn for home. Song of Fire is asked to go by Naughty Evelyn and does so. Song of Fire, Cheerful Charm, center of the course. Whistler Style is finishing well, just inside of her Renegade Princess. Here's Whistler Style from way out of it, coming right by them all in the final stages. And it will be Whistler Style to win it going away. Renegade Princess was second. Photo for third, Naughty Evelyn and Song of Fire. Double 2040. Pick five, 665, 60, and again the 20 cent pick six, 1,000.
Let's face it, we've all come to the track with $500, right, at one point in our life. And ultimately, maybe some of us thought, you know what, I hope I break even can I? because I can use the money. But all kidding aside, other people will say, you know what, I'm going to take that $500, maybe turn it into $1,000 or $2,000, really have a good day out at the racetrack. Well, last Saturday, the person you're looking at on the screen right now, he brought $500 to the racetrack. He actually played in the Sandy to Express Bet Tournament, and he turned his $500 into $8,248. That's him standing proudly on the right-hand side with a check totaling $12,700. That's because he earned prize money participating in the tournament. You've heard me say many times you should be playing in tournaments because not only did our seminar guest today have a great day at the windows, but he won prize money. He also won an NHC seat where he'll be participating at the Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada next March. And of course, the way he did it is how we're going to find out today. Let's introduce our special guest for today. His name, Len Hansen. Len, happy Saturday. Welcome to the seminar. Well, thank you very much. Now, Appreciate you that. obviously had a great Saturday last week. We're hoping you have a good Saturday today because you're the seminar guest. But first thing first what did you do to turn your five hundred dollars into almost eight thousand eight hundred dollars i th i th pretty much just waited until the last race <laughs> i love the last race uh, i love liberal in the last race i bet the horse it's in its last two races and uh thought that thought it could win it thought it should have won both of those races now liberal was dead last going down the backside. he yeah. obviously had no early speed was your heart uh, pumping a little bit maybe faster than it should have yeah, we talked about this last week. I was uh, going by the stands, going by me the first time, 20 lengths behind. It looked like 20 lengths behind the last place horse. I go, or the second to last place horse, and I couldn't figure out what he was doing. And uh, But the pace was pretty hot up front, so I thought, I I'd still have a shot here. And he just uh, circled the field on the far turn and came charging up on the outside. I was right at the wire on purpose so I could see it happen and got up right there at the wire. And uh, I hit a... My second horse that I liked was the one horse, Niles Channel, yep, I think it was. Yep, big price. A big price. And uh, I could have just played the exacta, but I, I thought I needed a little more, so I played the trifectas. Turns out I probably I would have won more money by just playing the exact straight exacta. Len, did you key Liberal on top? In other words, did he have to win, or did you also have him for second? Liberal had to win. Okay. I keyed uh, three horses in the second spot. The one, Niles Channel, the uh, was the eight horse – Spoli was on and the 12 horse Pratt was on. Can't remember the name of the horses. And, and then I came back, uh, those horses in the two spot, everybody in the third spot. And that's the one, that's the one you hit. Well, then I also came back and bet the liberal on top with all in the second spot with those three in the third spot. Nine, one, 10 was the winning order of finish in the trifecta. The 50 cent trifecta paid $824 and 75 cents. How many times did you have it for 50 cents? Ten times. Ten times. Yep. Ten times. So there was the magical number. Yep. Basically, you were down to nothing going into the last race. Would that be a correct assumption? That was that was the assumption. There was no money left on the ticket when I when I made that wager. Yep. And you're not a tournament rookie. You've played in a lot of tournaments and had a lot of success. Before we talk about that success, actually, let's rewind a little bit farther back. How'd you get involved in this goofy game of ours? I started in harness racing, believe it or not. My uncle owned a couple of harness horses. He, I went out there when I was 13 years old, got to... Uh, Right on the back of the sulky with him. Which track was this? Los Alamitos. Okay. Yeah. Los Alamitos. Hard to believe Los Alamitos had harness racing. Oh, it was it was wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful. I loved it. And uh, well, he we I got on that sulky that day, and I fell in love love with the game that day. Fell in love with the horse. Let's face it, right? Yeah. Isn't that what brought Absolutely. you into the game? Absolutely. Sure. And I thought this is this is something I want to be part of for my whole life. And it didn't didn't hurt that uh, we had one bet that day. My uncle. Uh, Asked somebody, one of his friends, what horse is going to win that day. The horse's name was Patricia P. And the horse won, paid 11 bucks. And I go, this is the easiest game in the world. <laughs> How long has this been around for? It's God's cruel trick, isn't it? Yeah. Most first-time starters at the racetrack wind up winning. They think it's an easy game. It costs them millions throughout their lifetime. But it hasn't cost you millions because you've had a lot of success both at the windows and in the tournaments. What is it about playing in tournaments that you like so much? <laughs> it's kind of Besides fun. winning money. Well, yeah, no, it, it really is. You, you played the races for your whole life. It's it's sort of notoriety, like I'm getting today. It's, it sounds silly, but so it's yeah. not the money; it's the ego. It, it, it's a little of both. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And you played in the NAC before. You ever done any damage over there in Vegas? No, <laughs> I've played five times. I'm a one track person. I mean, I play Santa Anita. I don't even venture up to uh, Golden Gate very often. I play right here. 
and obviously Del Mar when Santa Anita is not running. But that's pretty much it. So when I go to the NHC, I'm lost. You're a fish out of water. Yeah, I, I'd love to go. It's fun, you know, but it's uh, it's just I haven't been able to make a dent. I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what type of handicapper are you, Len? In other words, I see the racing form in front of you. It looks like you might be an old school handicapper. Do you use any sort of computer programs? Do you use the sheets? Do you watch replays? Do you just kind of roll up your sleeves and tackle whatever information is in the racing form? Like, give us your give us describe how you handicap. Absolutely old school racing form and replays. Well, I guess we didn't have replays, you know, 30 years ago, but now that's what I use, you know, along with the racing form to 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 form an opinion. When you look at the replays, Len, what are the things you're looking for that maybe the recreational handicapper wouldn't really know to look for? In other words, there's subtle type of trouble. There's obvious trouble that everybody sees, but maybe what sort of subtle trouble are you looking at when you look at the replays? Yeah, definitely subtle trouble. The 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 trouble that everybody's looking for when a horse just gets stopped making a move, um, those are you know I, I discount those. I don't I don't want to play a horse like that. They're overplayed next they're time overplayed. out. I want I'm looking for s subble things, uh, just the horse pull, pulling in a in a in a race in a um, short race, and then uh, they stretch out, um, and sometimes those horses can make the lead. Looking for you know uh, horses with lone speed a lot of times. Um, and it, you know, just a, it's just a combination of different type of different type of trouble that I'm looking for. Are there certain trainers and jockeys you might either embrace or ignore? In other words, are they important, uh, you know, uh, important, uh, ingredients in your handicapping arsenal? Absolutely. Um, but don't need to name names yeah, because we don't want to make any it. enemies, yeah. but there are certain trainers and jockeys you Absolutely. would embrace and maybe yeah. certain jockeys on front end horses that you would prefer over others. You've been around a long time. You understand what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. I, I, you know, when you're, when you're talking about, um, somebody told me to be really careful with this part. So <laughs> I'm trying to be really careful. No one's watching. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. 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 There's a couple of people <laughs> close relatives. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just, a. it, it, it it's just, it, it's just trouble that not everybody's going to notice. Not everybody's going to see. I'll, I'll watch replays six or seven times if I think I see something. We're going to talk about a couple of those horses, you know, today. They're actually running and, and why I like them and, and caught them on big prices because people are not paying attention to those things. You know, and then Flavian uh, gets, you know, just gets hammered, right? He was just getting hammered for the last two years. So you're looking for races where you can beat, maybe think you can beat Flavian. He still beats you sometimes, but, you know. I'm looking for races like that. It's a double-edged sword whenever you're playing Flavian. The good news is Flavian's over in Dubai, so we don't need to worry about him on today's card. But what we do need to worry about are the early changes. So let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Maramati. Get those early changes. When we return, we're going to find out who Len likes. He teased us that he likes a couple of big price horses. We're going to find out who they are once we get those scratches from Frank Maramati. Thanks so much for joining us on a beautiful afternoon here at the Great Race Place. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast and the turf course is firm. The rail on the turf at zero feet. Here are the early changes. First race starts the early pick five. There's no high five wagering with the scratcher number five, Chaos Theory. Race one, scratch number five. In the second, overweights, number four plus three, and five is plus two. There are no changes in the third. The fourth race is the start of the Rainbow Six. The jackpot is at $46,000. No changes in race four. Fifth race, start of the late pick five, scratch number eight, discretionary day. Race five, scratch number eight. In the sixth race, beginning of the late pick four, no scratches or jockey changes. 
The Santa Ana Stakes is our seventh race today, grade three event, program scratch of number one. In the eighth race, beginning of the golden hour pick four, linking the last two races from Santa Anita Park with the final two from Golden Gate Fields, there are no changes. And in the ninth, numbers five, I got a gal, and seven, Dolly May, should both be listed as racing with Lasix for the first time today. Golden Hour Double begins with the ninth. Enjoy your day at the Great Race Place. Remember that Run Happy Santa Anita Derby Day is coming up two weeks from today on Saturday, April 9th. Post time for the first is in 58 minutes at 1 p.m. Right now we go back to Quigley's Corner. Tom's special guest today is Len Hansen. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Len, uh, Len Hansen. He's a horse player who participated in the $500 Sandy to Express Bet tournament uh, last Saturday. Live money tournament. He turned his $300 bankroll into $8,248. He walked out of here with a check for $12,786, plus a seat in the National Handicapping Championship in Las Vegas next March in uh, at Bally's Hotel and Casino. So we're going to see if he's going to bounce or if he's going to actually duplicate that effort by putting him to the test and finding out who he likes on today's nine race card. So Len, let's kick it off in race number one we're sprinting six furlongs in the turf course the rails today are at zero feet and race number one begins the popular 50 cent early pick five there is one scratch scratch the five chaos theory leaves us with a field of six current betting choice on the board at uh four to five is number one koto paxi on a two-way uh, win streak for trainer doug o'neill who do you like in race one and why well, you just said it. Cotopaxi is is my top horse. Um, not a lot of imagination on this one. Uh, speed, not a lot of speed in the race. Um, so I'm going with Cotopaxi. And the second horse is a price horse, Star Racer. I think um, can get a good position on the turn with uh, Cotopaxi and maybe finish one, two, and uh, they just cruise home together. You're using the inside and two runner as we look at the graphic. One and seven are your top two selections, as you just described, Len. Any concern about the post position, specifically with number one, Cotopaxi, drawn downside in the rail, typically not the place you want to be. But as you mentioned, has some early speed. Is that is that any sort of a concern for you, drawing the rail? Definitely it's a concern, but I, I don't see anybody that can go with them other than the seven, maybe. Um, so if the seven crosses over, that could be a problem. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. It's interesting, although it was a uh, optional claiming race, or I should say a starter a, a starter optional claiming race back on January 28th for Koto Baxi. That half mile fraction was the set was the fastest half mile fraction for six furlongs in the turf as of that particular date. So certainly uh, he was smoking along at the half mile that day. He does have a lot of other early speed. Um, typically, it sounds like you're more of a speed type of player, right, Len? In other words, you prefer horses kind of engaged early on as opposed to deep closers. It really depends. Depends on the race, how I see it set up. Yeah, it's not really a speed player. My my buddy Joe Vita is a. Speed I know player. Joe. You yeah. know Joe. Yeah. yeah, he's Mr. Speed. He goes to a lot of NC two A tournament games. Who knows? He might be at one of them up in San Francisco today. He's here. He's playing here. <laughs> <laughs> a man after our own heart. He wouldn't miss the races for anything. Let's turn the page, uh, Len, and take a look at race number two. Begins the uh, 50 cent early pick four. 
We're on the main track, six and a half furlongs of the distance, maiden special weights, three year olds and up. We've got a feel of six. Number six, Royal Orb is a first time gelling. Moyne line favorite from the Bob Baffert bar, number one, high connection. Eight to five on the Moyne line, first time starter is high connection. And of course, congratulations to Mr. Baffert and uh, Frankie DeTore, who won the Dubai World Cup a little bit earlier this morning with uh, Country Grammar and Hot Rod Charlie, also represented Southern California very well from the Doug O'Neill barn, finishing second. Before we get your thoughts on the race line, I wanted to take a look at the workout for B Doc. Back on March 19th, it was a team great team gate drill with another Doug O'Neill runner by the name of Slow Down Andy. Slow Down Andy is going to run in the Sunland Derby tomorrow. Mario Gutierrez is going to go out to ride. But first things first, this is the workout between uh, B Doc and Slow Down Andy. B Doc is down on the inside, and you can see he's got plenty of early speed. He's actually in front here of uh, Slow Down Andy. But as we uh, continue to watch the workout, as they get closer to the finish line, we'll see that Slow Down Andy easily easily disposes of him. But uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, I think it's a fairly decent workout for a horse that the Connections paid 85 times the stud fee. Gormley stands for $7,500. The Connections paid $425,000 at auction. So they certainly must have liked what they saw. And that race two back where he finished a good second to McLaren Vale certainly stamps, his, stamps him as one of the contenders last time out. The connection shipped him up to Golden Gate, and it sure looks like as the one to two favorite, he didn't handle the synthetic surface. But I thought this was a decent workout as they round the turn and come into the home stretch here. You'll see that the rider on B Doc, who again down is on the inside, the feet will come out of the stirrups, kind of indicating that the work is over. But Slow Down Andy on the outside is going so easily. I think Slow Down Andy is going to run a big race tomorrow in the Sunland Park Derby. So he's certainly one to pay attention to. B Doc has some stiff competition in race number two today, but it was an interesting work to show for both runners. Having said all of that, Len, it's your turn to talk. Tell us who you like in race two and why. Uh, these are not races that I typically play, but I'm going to I'm gonna go with Devil Moon. Uh, replay, again, a lot of uh, broke a little slow, got up in behind horses, wasn't happy, um, and I just kind of throw that race out. And I, I think I think that horse is going to have some speed. I, I expect the uh, speed to hold up on the dirt like I've seen a lot lately. Um, so I'm, that's the horse I came up with. Uh, second horse is the Baffert horse. And, you know, I don't have to say much about that. He just destroys us betters, uh, you know, in the two and three year old races all the time. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to stick with him in, in the second spot. Five and one in race number one for Len. A question for you, Devil Moon, you mentioned debuted on the turf course, now goes to the main track. Richard Mandela, pretty patient trainer, gets the riding services of Mike Smith. You just like a lot of things about this horse, not only the connections, but like you said, some of the subtle trouble that he encountered in his debut. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Mandela, you have to respect and any any time he puts a horse in a race, you have to respect him. And a lot of times I'll if I if I'm fearful of a horse like that, I'll just stay out of the race because he just does things that I don't expect. And I'm sure as a player, particularly as an avid tournament player, there are certain price levels where even though you might love a horse, you'll stay away from the horse because the because the odds are just too short. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking for prices everywhere. Um, that's if 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 a horse I love is uh, over bet, I might look for an exact or a trifecta, something like that to, to continue to play the horse. Um, you know, if he gets over bet, it happens quite a bit here. You know, when you when you think you have an angle and a horse just gets, uh, you know, eight to one morning line and gets crushed down to five to two, um, sometimes you have to find something else to make it worth your wild. You talked about how you fell in love with our game through the harness side first and then transitioned over to the thoroughbred side. We know you like to push it through the windows on a daily basis, but have you ever owned a horse? Have you ever owned a harness or a thoroughbred horse? I've owned thoroughbreds. Yep. Um, it's been 20 years. Uh, 20 years ago, I owned with a couple of uh, buddies that I worked with and we had an old time trainer. You might remember uh, Carl Pugh, um, trained horses in the 80s he came back out of retirement and trained a couple of uh thoroughbreds for us um we won a race here uh with a horse we paid a thousand dollars for on core express <laughs> it was so great you should have heard you should have heard me screaming i was just going nuts i won a race at san anita i'm sure the winner circle picture is still hanging proudly oh, somewhere yeah. in your household yeah it's it's actually in the garage <laughs> 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 my wife uh <laughs> she moved it no 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 oh, okay no actually no it's in the it, it's it's it, it's in a place where i'm 
taking care of it. It's, it's not at the house, though. <laughs> Race number three, we're going two turns on the turf course, one mile of the distance. Three-year-old Philly Calbreth, non-winners of one other than a field of six. Morning line favorite number two, Mad Madiha, who won two races back, is the five to two morning line favorite. Before we get your thoughts on the race line, we want to watch a replay for number one, You, Your Honor. Uh, he last ran, I should say she last ran, on February 13th. She, she broke from the number four post. Keep in mind as we watch the replay, the uh, filly that broke right inside of her from the three post is She's Bulletproof. She's Bulletproof is going to uh, run in race number nine today. So take note as we're watching this replay here of both number three, She's Bulletproof, and number four, you, your honor. Now, you, your honor is pressing the pace here, Len. And the most important thing as we watch the replay is going to happen a little bit, uh, a little bit later in the replay. And that's when they turn into the home stretch. But right now, you, your honor, getting a relatively decent uh, stalking position under Juan Hernandez. And then, uh, unfortunately, in her turf in her turf debut, which is the replay we're watching back on February 13th, turning into the lane for whatever reason, she kind of stumbled, took a bad step. She lost her action. It's just about to happen, like I said, as they turn into the home stretch. I'll toss the microphone over to you so you can describe the action. Yeah, so I wagered on this horse last time, and I thought, here we go, making that winning move right here. And, whoa, what happened? Um, stumbled, took a bad step, whatever. Uh, Jock stood up for just a second, and... Um, you know, you throw the race out at that point. I think, I think this horse can stretch out tons of speed, obviously can go, you know, sit wherever he wants. Um, so I just like the, I like this type of horse. And she's bulletproof, of course, very dangerous sprinter from the uh, Ruben Alvarado barn emerged victorious. So certainly you, your honor, keeping good company. We'll see if in fact she can uh, stretch out to two turns today. Is that your top pick in the race? And who else do you like in the race? If it's not. Got a long shot there. My top uh, top pick is Your Honor. Second pick is Precious Inside. I think this horse just has a a, a look at a big big price, um, and uh, I ran a couple of really nice races, a couple of duds lately. But uh, last time it didn't look like horse was um, messed with it down the lane. Uh, so I think I think there's a chance this horse can be close and and finish right off Ute, Your Honor. You make a very good point, Len, that I kind of want to visit with you when you were describing Precious Insight and why you like her. You're willing to draw a line through her last two races, and if you're able to do that, her form suddenly becomes a lot better. As a handicapper, you have to be willing to excuse bad efforts for whatever the reason. Some are very obvious. Some we don't know as handicappers. They might have lost a shoe. They might have swallowed their tongue. Mm -hmm. There's a million excuses. You have to be kind of uh, flexible as a handicapper, right, in order to kind of find these big price runners. Well, absolutely. I, I also was, you know, you look at the jock and what the jock was doing down the stretch. Uh, if they're not, if they're not pushing on him anymore, that just, just letting the horse finish it, finish the race, knowing that they can't really, uh, can't, can't win the race, can't finish second. Saving her for another saving, day. Saving for another day. That's what it looked like to me last time. Yeah. And it's interesting. I'm sure the expectations were high for the connections of Precious Insight. The dam cost $500,000 at auction. So certainly there was pedigree or looks whenever they bought her. So certainly, uh, you know, the progeny of the dam, uh, expectations are high. Like I said, and like we've been discussing with Len, if you can draw a line through those last two races, including a big stakes race, uh, two races back, suddenly uh, she becomes a lot more uh, favorable in terms of handicapping and accepting the big price of 20 to one on the morning line. Let's take a look at race number four. It begins the 20 cent rainbow pick six, the jackpot single ticket carryover, now up to $46,000. And we kick things off, spreading five and a half furlongs on the main track. Calbred, allowance optional claiming types, non-winners of one other than a field of six. Number four, Kalinga Road from the Carla Gaines Barn, who has a few live runners on today's card, is the eight to five morning line favorite. Give us your thoughts on race four, Len. Speed, speed, speed. <laughs> Um, the outside two horses look like the, the speediest to me. So I'm going with those two, um, don't really have a solid opinion, but just like the, uh, just look, looking at the ra the way the racetrack's running, I want, I want to be on the lead and these two horses look like they're, that's where they're going to be. Is there a concern, Linda, they might cancel each other out with the speed? In other words, sometimes, you know, they can duel each other into a submission, so to speak. Is there any concern uh, of that for you? Definitely, there's concern for that, but I just, it, it's probably a race I'm not going to wager on. Um, so I'm, I'm, unless I'm playing pick threes, things like that. Uh, yeah, obviously you're worried about that, but it seems like the speed's been running so well that, uh, you know, the deep closers haven't been getting anywhere close. So I'm just using that angle. I don't, I don't typically look for uh, signals from the track, but, but it seemed pretty obvious last week. 
you make a good point about the uh, track favor and early speed because right now the temperatures are so warm as we speak. It's in the mid 80s. Yesterday was close to 90. Typically, when we get those warm temperatures here in Southern California, particularly in the early months of the year, it tends to kind of speed up the track and also favor front runners. I'm sure you've kind of seen that over the years with your handicapping. Yeah, I, I've been, uh, you know, I, I, I think some of my buddies do that a better job of that following with the, how the tracks doing it and they'll feed that information to me and it'll help my handicapping. Um, so I don't, I don't think I'm a, a racetrack bug. I'm not really paying attention to that much, but I'll, you know, that information gets to me eventually after six or seven races that I've missed. <laughs> Lens top two picks in race number four, number five, stir the pot, number six area code. You'll see the number six area code is trained by John Sadler. Here's a statistic courtesy of Brad Free of the Daily Racing Forum. John Sadler, with his last 12 dirt starters here in Southern California, has won with eight of them, finished, with sec finished second with two of them, and finished third with one of them. He's 11 for 12 in the money with his last, uh, last 12 dirt starters. So certainly we'll see if the John Sadler barn can keep that streak going in race number four. Race number five begins the 50 cent late pick five. We're back on the turf course. Mile and an eighth is a distance once again for Cal Breds. Non-winners of one other than. Scratch the, scratch the eight discretionary day. Leaves us with a field of eight. The morning line favorite down on the rail number one. Touchdown Brown from the Brian Coroner barn is the five to two morning line favorite. Not much turf form to go on here, Len. What say you about race five? Yeah, so I'm throwing them out. I like it. <laughs> Beat the chalk. Right. Beat the chalk. Uh, this this is a race I'll probably wager on. Uh, this is a uh, I like worse Reed Sanchez. Um, fantastic races on turf. Tried the big boys last time. Uh, I was here and it looked like they just took care of him. Doesn't like the another dirt. example of just another ignoring example. that last race. Ignoring that last race. I think this horse has a big shot. Um, I know he's a three year old against older, but I, I I've seen. I've, see, I've seen this team, O'Neill, um, do this before, and so I'm not afraid to take a shot here. I think you know, I get eight to one. Uh, it depends on how many people are watching. <laughs> Nobody, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, your price will go up. Yeah. <laughs> Who else do you like? And in then, the uh, yeah, second pick for this race is the, uh, the four, if I'd told you. Um, I think that horse has a big shot also. Uh, we'll see how the – a lot of times I'll – look at a race like this and maybe uh, have a couple of horses I like and maybe play the biggest price and then put the other, those horses in an exacta. Um, just depends on, you know, what happens on the tote board. Let me visit that uh, thought for a minute, Len, if I could, obviously you made your big money last Saturday in the tournament playing trifectas. Are you typically a trifecta player? Do you play exactas? Like what type of player are you when you're just playing real money, not, not in tournaments? A little bit of everything, but typically win. I I'm a win better for the most part. Um, the only reason I, I if I had a thousand dollars last Saturday, I would have put a thousand dollars on liberal. Um, that was my plan. That was my strategy. I didn't get there. So I had to come up with a uh, different. You were strategy. trying to get there. In other trying words, get... you had a $300 bank. Oh, you're trying to get to a thousand dollars. The previous races didn't agree with you. Yep. You know, you lost, you were basically desperate men do desperate things and you were forced into being aggressive and playing trifecta. Exactly. Yep. Uh, do you ever play pick fives, pick sixes, anything like that? Pick sixes, I don't play. I do not play those. I haven't played them over the years. Um, I was afraid you were going to ask me what the biggest pick six win was. And $4,000 like uh -huh. <laughs> wasn't much. I don't, yeah, I, I stay away from the pick six. I like the win betting. Uh, and yeah, obviously I'm getting, it seems like I'm getting really good at the trifectas lately. It's not something I used to play a lot, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting to like it now. Don't mess with what's not broken, that's for yeah. sure. Race number six begins the 50 cent late pick for six and a half furlongs on the main track. Main claiming forty thousand dollars is the claiming tag. We've got a field of eight. Take note the rail number one, Dance Company is a first time gelling. The favorite down on the bottom, number eight, Grand Concourse Guy from the Bob Hess Barn. Second off the claim, five to two on John White's morning light morning line. Give us your thoughts on race six, Len. I like the one again. I I've been talking about speed. I think this horse has sneaky speed. I think uh, I've seen Herrera, the jock, do this several times with horses that really don't look like they have speed. And he gets them out of the gate, um, gets that rail, keeps that rail. And if he keeps this rail, keeps the rail today, I think he's gone. I don't I don't think anybody can catch him. He's a talented rider, that's for sure. And the weight off certainly helps. That might be one of the reasons why trainer Doug O'Neill decided to ride him back. Yep. If you were playing exact as tries or maybe even pick fours, who else would you use in the race? I, I would go with the eight horse. There's a speed horse too. I'm hoping he can hold that horse outside. They go around the track together and they finish one, two. 
one and eight in race number six. So says uh, Len Hansen. Let's take a look at race number seven. It's our feature race on the card. It's the grade three Santa Ana sticks for fillies and mares going a mile and a quarter on the turf course. The start will be basically halfway down the hillside turf course. Program scratch of the one leaves us with a field of eight. Morning line favorite number eight going to Vegas, who won this race last year as the nine to five morning line favorite. Our guest is going to Vegas in March of next year to play in the NHC. Is that your top pick in the race or you're looking elsewhere? I am looking elsewhere. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, Richie Baltus. Yeah, well, and all those owners. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah. So I, it seems to get over bet every time. I'm going to stay away from, from a horse like that, obviously. I think, I think, I think the world of the horse. But I, I like, um, I've been chasing this horse all year long. That can get dangerous. Yeah. Closing remarks. Okay, I, tell us why. I, I've been playing this horse uh, since Del Mar just running, you know, huge races uh, against Going Global, uh, we all know about. Uh, Phil Damato Barn. Yep, absolutely. So uh, this horse has run a bunch of big, big races there. I I didn't expect the morning line at five to two, but I'm not going to go away from a, a horse that I've been, you know, following for a while. I think this horse, I think this horse has a good shot to, uh, to beat these today. She's a cow bred and she's never gone a mile and a quarter. Is the distance a concern at all for you, Len? But not from the races that I've watched, I think. Definitely a mile and a quarter is not a problem. She's got a good closing yeah. kick and the extra distance hopefully yeah. will benefit her. Yep, absolutely. Who else did you like in the race? Uh, my second pick is going to be Queen Goddess. Now, this horse went to uh, Oaklawn in race last time. I don't typically like to see a horse coming back that quickly off of a trip, but uh, this horse has been impressed me several times too. So I think this horse, this is going to be an up and comer. I think this horse is going to be a nice horse one day uh, or already is obviously in a stakes race, but you know, do bigger things than she already has. Grade one winner, albeit on the, on the uh, main track when the uh, race on the turf, the American Oaks was washed off and they ran it on the main track, won it a mile and a quarter on the main track. We'll see if Queen Goddess can get the mile and a quarter on the turf course. We didn't talk a whole lot about going to Vegas because we're trying to beat the favorite, but I'll tell you what, Richie Baltus certainly has owned this uh, particular race over the years. Uh, as I mentioned, going to Vegas won this race last year. In 2020, the race was canceled due to COVID, but in 2019, 2018, and 2017, trainer Richie Baltus also won the Santa Ana Stakes, and he's looking to repeat that performance with going to Vegas in race number seven. Race number eight begins the $1 golden hour pick four, linking our last two races here at San Edu with the last two races at Golden Gate. It always pays well. Yesterday, four short price horses won. It still paid in excess of $400. Make sure you participate, even though Len doesn't look at Golden Gate. He's a one-trick pony <laughs> or a one-track pony. We're, we kick things off here with the Golden Hour pick four in race eight, sprinting seven furlongs in the main track. It's for starter allowance types, a field of nine. Morning line favorite, number two, California Street, who certainly likes this distance, is the five to two morning line favorite. Personally, Len, I thought this was the best betting race on the card. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's several ways to go here, but I'm as I've been talking about the the whole uh, afternoon is speed. So I like synthesis. Um, just claimed for twenty five thousand. I'm thinking I can get a pretty nice price here. Seven furlong races. I I want a horse that uh, going long typically needs to be in front. I think I think a horse like that has the stamina, especially if can hold the rail, like we talked about before. Hold the rail and uh, keep those horses outside. Um, and they'd not go too fast for California Street because California Street would come running. Um, I think I think Synthesis has a big shot at eight to one morning line. Synthesis trained by Timmy Octine as is number two California Street. It's interesting. Timmy Octine claimed both horses last time out in their last performances. Three claims in for both horses. Timmy Octine was the victor in uh, winning both of those shakes. You also like number nine in the race, who is drawn on the outside. Number nine. I'm Corfu from the Doug O'Neill barn. First off the claim. What'd you like about that runner? I, I, I think when uh, O'Neill claims horses, I pay attention. Uh, might not go this, this first time. Interesting distance. Horse hasn't, uh, as far as I can see, has not gone that, gone this distance. So I'll just see what happens. He's speed. I think they might go one, two around the track, like I've said in so many races today. One and nine in race number eight. Let's close it out in race number nine, which begins the $5 Golden Hour Daily Double. Similar concept. Last race at San Ita with the last race at Golden Gate. And we're coming down the hillside turf course, six and a half furlongs of the distance. Three-year-old fillies, non-winners of one other than. We've got a full field of 11. Take note, both number five, seven, and 11 are all first-time Lasix users. The morning line favorite, number nine, Delmona, second-time starter here in the United States. Five to two morning line favorite. Before we get Len's thoughts on the race, let's take a look at the replay for number six, Grace 
race, Lynn Gray. This would have been her effort two races back on January 16th. She's the gray filly. She breaks from post position number four. Let's watch them break from the gate. She was under the, uh, she was being ridden this particular day by Tyler Bays. And Tyler Bays had a bit of trouble coming out of the gate here, as you'll see. Kind of a rough trip early, as notated in the racing form. Drop back and basically made a really, really good late run. Now, the interesting thing about Grace Lynn Gray, if you have the racing form in front of you, is she won her first two races up in Canada by a combined distance of 37 and a quarter lengths. It's not too often you see horses win by 14 lengths and 23 and a half lengths. Now, granted, the competition might not have been that great, but at the same time, she won against Open Company. They didn't even bother trying to break her maiden in a maiden race. So she definitely has some quality. They brought her to Southern California, and this was her debut effort on the flat turf course. And you'll see she puts in a good late run here. Like I said, she's the gray. She's easy to follow. She's wearing the number four saddle cloth. And her come home time was excellent. If you do the internal fractions, she came home basically her last uh, quarter of a mile in roughly 24 seconds, which for a lightly raced three-year-old filly, I thought was very, very good. That's her on the outside putting in a late run here. Like I said, she gets up to finish second, just missing by a length. Now they try the downhill turf course, which obviously is a different uh, layout, a longer distance. It might actually hit her right between the eyes. She re adds Lasix after trying the big girls last time out in the graded stakes race, and they switch over to Joe Bravo as well. That's my introduction for the race, Joe. I do like Graceland Gray. I'm interested to find out who you like. Fluent is my horse. Uh, I played this horse last time. I, I thought I was going to catch a huge price. It was 15 to 1 in the morning line. There were some scratches. A couple in of that scratches, race. yeah. I ended up getting 5 to 1. I hit the pick 4 uh, several times. Paid well. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good great day so that was uh you know that that was i just wanted to show my big win on the <laughs> replay is all You're i bragging once again <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the uh, bug boy juan espinoza was uh, in the saddle yeah. that day they switch over to mike smith that has to be uh, certainly a sign of positive intent as well well absolutely i, lo I love the horse in the you know in his previous races i seen some things there we talked about subtle trouble that the, re the reason i love that horse last time uh, luckily there was a couple scratches because one of those horses came back and won after scratching out um, so maybe I wouldn't have won if they were in there. Who uh, else, who else do you like? Graceland gray is my, is, is my second horse, uh, off of that replay. You just seen, it was just huge. Uh, horse ran huge, came back, stretched out and didn't work out so well, but I'm going to come back and, and, and say the source has a big shot. Three and six to close it out. So says our seminar guest today, Len Hansen. No tournaments today on Liner at Sandy. And next Saturday, Florida Derby Day, we'll have a $1,500 live money tournament. And the following Saturday, two weeks from today, is the Run Happy Sandy to Derby Day. We'll also have another $1,500 tournament, both on track at Sandy and Express. But I have a feeling our guest, Len Hansen, will be involved at least in one, if not both. Len, thanks so much for your time and insight today. Continued success. Congratulations on your big Thank score you. last Saturday. Hope you knock it out of the park again today. Thank you. Hope you knock it out of the park as well. I want to thank all of you for watching. Have nothing but fun and wish you nothing but good luck as well. Thanks for watching us, everybody, and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to San Anita Park. Here are the changes. Track is fast and turf is firm with the rail at zero feet. In the first, scratch number five, chaos theory, and as a result, there's no super high five wagering. First race, of course, starts the early pick five. In the second, number four, Gojo one, three over. Five, Devil Moon, two pounds over. Early pick four starts with race two. Turning to the third, there are no changes. Fourth starts the Rainbow Six. 46,000 in the jackpot carryover. In the fifth, late pick five begins. Scratch number eight, discretionary day. The late pick four starts with race six. No scratches or jockey changes. The seventh is the Santa Ana Stakes, grade three event. Program scratcher number one, disappearing act. Eighth race, golden hour pick four. No changes. And in the ninth, the golden hour double begins. Both numbers five and seven race with Lasix for the first time. Enjoy your day at the great race place. 26 minutes to post for race one.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of everyone here at First Racing, we'd like to welcome you to Saturday here at beautiful Santa Anita Park. Hi, everybody. Peter Lurie now with the morph version of Michelle Yu, known as Millie Ball. <laughs> The blonde Millie, version. The blonde it. version. Well, there you go. Hey, by the way, speaking of uh, what happened across the globe, yeah. congratulations out to Bob Baffert. Uh, as as his owner said, the goat did it again. <laughs> you know, we call this place the great race place, Santa Anita, right? I am so proud that the first two finishers of the Dubai World Cup call this place home right here, Santa Anita. Country Grammar on top, Hot Rod Charlie, who ran enormously in defeat. So very proud to, to say that we get to watch these horses train through the year and congratulations to all the connections for that huge result. And of course, as Tom Quigley likes to say, hashtag the West is best. <laughs> Let's talk about what's happening here. We got ourselves a nice little 140,000 to kick off the pick five pool. First things first, we have a workout courtesy of our partners over at XB TV. It concerns the first timer in this country coming over from the UK, Motorious for Phil D'Amato. I thought this was an important work to show because you can see Gregorian Chant was in this drill and he came back to win yesterday off of this drill. So it's productive one. Now, Motorius is in the middle here. Uh, you've got in front is Overdue, who also ran in that same race as Gregorian Chant yesterday. But I thought this was a solid work uh, with the company that Motorius was being asked to keep there. Uh, first time Lasix, which I think is important. He's uh, coming off a little bit of a layoff, but I'm not worried about that with the stats that Phil D'Amato puts up with horses. First time in this country, predominantly from Europe. Those horses are coming from England or Ireland, but I think this is uh, certainly a horse to consider in here. Scratching the five chaos theory. I thought that was a horse to use, so had to do a little readjusting as far as our pick five tickets are concerned. I go $54. You go how much? My ticket was 36, I 36. believe it was $36. All now. right, well, we'll, I'm sure we'll see those tickets in just a little bit. Take a look at the field leading into the uh, walking ring, Cotopaxi. Got some speed for Doug O'Neill, looking to make it three in a row. Yeah, I really like Cotopaxi in here, as do the public at Even Money. He's just in super form right now. It was a timely claim for trainer Doug O'Neill off of Jeff Mullins. Uh, Diego Herrera kind of changed things up when they put him on because this horse was quick enough to find the lead in his last two races, going the six and six and a half furlong. So it seems to be like they found what he wants to do is sprint and be aggressive early. Four horse caisson went by quickly has not been seen since november 29th of 2020 however has a couple of strong works for trainer richard mandela and caisson you know he's a very gifted horse i just wonder whether this distance of the six furlongs might be a tad too short for him i watched his work on the 14th of march on xbtv and uh, he looked like he was working pretty hard for that work in a 101 but again you know it might just be a little bit too short this distance for him gorgeous he's coming off of 16 months gorgeous gray just came by that was istanbul isn't he lovely six-year-old son of he's had enough comes off a win up at golden gate for trainer jim cassidy you know when he won last time out he was carrying 1268 pounds that's that's how much he weighs he's a right? big boy he actually is coming back um and it's quite quick for him to come back but he's put on weight he's put on 10 pounds so he's now 1278 pounds so he, that's a good sign would you hear that yeah the horse just said are you fat shaming me is that what's going on here Remember Never. Millie Ball. He's so beautiful. We're, we're woke around here. Uh, six furlongs, turf, optional 50. Non-winners of one for the early pick five in the pool at 155,748. That will continue to grow. Uh, we'll be hearing from uh, Zoe Cadman throughout the broadcast. On behalf of everyone here at First Racing, we'd like to welcome you to a Saturday at Santa Anita. Jay Cohen calls him onto the track for the first race. 
Start of the 50 cent early pick five. There's no high five wagering. Scratch number five, chaos theory. The first is named for Chloe and Eric's wedding race. Nine minutes.
So Cadman out here at the starting gate. These horses all had a good warm up behind me. Three of them going onto the turf course and crossing over the dirt. That was the three guildsmen, the six Motorious and the seven Star Racer all crossed over the dirt. Something that these horses are allowed to do here at Santa Anita. As far as who looks best out here, I cannot talk you off the current favorite right now. That is the one Cotopaxi. Looks fantastic out there for all the reasons that everybody today has mentioned. And he's got speed to burn in here with the weight off and Diego Herrera. He's barely turned a hair. He's got his ears pricked. It's a beautiful day here at Santa Anita. He's not an overly big son of Sir Prance Lot, just a nice typey looking Euro sprinter. And if you take a look at his back legs, his hocks there, you'll see that he scalps a bit behind and those white patches are to stop him hitting himself. Imagine yourself running down a road and your heels kind of clicking together and hitting yourself. That just stops him hitting himself right there. Uh, the three guildsmen is still warming up under Ryan Curitalo. That could actually mean he's going to show a little bit more pace than he did last time for Mr. Falcone having a good trot around here. But for me, I like the one Cotopaxi and I think the four Casson for Hall of Famer Dick Mandela looks fantastic. He is fit. He is ready. I love the turn back from root to sprint. Dick Mandela bats at 31%. So do not sleep on the four. Currently at nine to two, that is Casson with JJ Hernandez, who's been on a tear of late. Three races yesterday and looks like he's well, well mounted today. It's post time. The horses have reached the gate. Loading in the gate for the first. Cotopaxi, the first one to load. Here's Motorius. Istanbul, the gray. Guildsman. Star Racer to complete the line. They're in the gate. And they're off. Istanbul is very quick away from the gate. So too Cotopaxi. And Cotopaxi takes the lead as they get to the main course. Quezon is not far away. Just two lengths off the leaders. And Guildsman comes through at the rail. Star Racer fifth. Four off the pace. And Motorius, who is off half a step slowly, trails. It's Cotopaxi with a clear-cut advantage past the half-mile pole. A two-length lead over Istanbul, second. Quezon on the outside, third. Then Guildsman, fourth. Motorius inches up outside Star Racer. Midway on the far turn, Cotopaxi in charge. Still a two-length lead on Istanbul. Quezon, Guildsman on the fence. 
Then it's Star Racer between horses. Motorious White Blinkers starts to rally on the outside, has work to do with a furlong left to go. And Cotopaxi cruising along throughout, has a three-length advantage. Center of the course, Motorious. The gray Istanbul fights on gamely, but it's Cotopaxi in a dominant effort. Cotopaxi all the way, scores by almost two. Motorious got up for second. Guildsman, then Istanbul. Number one, Cotopax, he was first. Six, Motorious, second, photo for third. Entering the run-happy winner circle, number one, Cotopaxi. He's a four-year-old bay colt by Sir Prancelot out of Beth, owned by ERJ Racing, Hames and Strouds. The winning trainer, Doug O'Neill. And the jockey, apprentice Diego Herrera. Cotopaxi was bred in Ireland by Tally Ho Stud. First race named for Chloe and Eric's wedding race. In the second, we'll start the early pick four, 26 minutes to post. Running time for the opener, 108.25.
star racer to complete the line. They're in the gate. And they're off. Istanbul is very quick away from the gate. So too Cotopaxi. And Cotopaxi takes the lead as they get to the main course. Quezon is not far away, just two lengths off the leaders. And Gildsman comes through at the rail. Star Racer fifth, four off the pace. And Motorius, who is off half a step slowly, trails. It's Cotopaxi with a clear-cut advantage past the half-mile pole. A two-length lead over Istanbul, second. Quezon on the outside, third. Then Gildsman, fourth. Motorius inches up outside Star Racer. Midway on the far turn, Cotopaxi in charge. Still a two-length lead on Istanbul. Quezon, Gildsman on the fence. Then it's Star Racer between horses. Motorious White Blinkers starts to rally on the outside, has work to do with a furlong left to go. And Cotopaxi cruising along throughout, has a three-length advantage. Center of the course, Motorious. The gray Istanbul fights on gamely, but it's Cotopaxi in a dominant effort. Cotopaxi all the way, scores by almost two. Motorious got up for second. Guildsman, then Istanbul. It takes many forms, often revealing itself in dramatic fashion, forever reshaping how we see the world around us, unearthing something deeper within that awakens us to the truth. There is so much more out there yet to be discovered. Yamaha Resort and Casino at San Manuel.
Welcome back, everybody. 16 minutes to post race number two, the start of the early pick four. As we're looking at maiden special weight three-year-olds and upward here, Millie Ball. And we do have a work uh, that we want to pass on to uh, some of our folks, courtesy of XBTV. Yeah, this is the number three B-Doc in here. This three-year-old gelding uh, was unplaced last time out, but I thought this was a pretty solid work for him. Now, he's working in company with Slow Down Andy, who's on the outside of him. Slow Down Andy will likely be the favorite for the Sunland Derby on Sunday. So the fact that these two have been put together in company, this wasn't one of those, you know, catch me if you can type of works right. where the uh, the inside horse is let off to run and set it sets the tempo for the, the usually bigger and better horse. This is one of those works where the two of them are asked to, to go right from the gate. And I thought that BDOT, considering the ability that we know Slow Down Andy has, hung in there pretty tough in this work. As far as the rest of the group is concerned, six to five favorite, one horse high connection. And again, with some pretty high connections, congratulations. And again, uh, to the team Bob Baffer with that victory over in Dubai. But uh, this horse has been working exceptionally well, a 59 and three in uh, from the gate in uh, Lou for the debut here. Barn hits 35% with 249 first-time starters. That is definitely a stat you can use. It, it certainly is. He definitely gets his horses ready for their debuts. And we have a work on XBTV that you can watch if you want to for high connection. That work on the 17th of March out of the gate. He was on the inside of company. He carried on and worked out the five furlongs. A very strong work. I thought the further he went, in my opinion, the better he looked. So six and a half, I think, is a good starting spot for him. Six might have been a tad sharp for him, but by the, the impression he gave me, he wants to go two turns. His damn Forest Legend was a debut winner. Um, and uh, the company he was keeping was Blue Devil, who uh, was quite a pricey Uncle Mo at auction. So high connection, I think. The fact he's got to overcome the rail, but he broke very sharply on the inside of company in that latest gate drill. You're talking about what he's probably destined for. I mean, anytime you look in the Grand Sire's curling, that kind of tells you the longer, the better. Curling, of course, a classic distance winning horse in grade one company. Pioneering Papa, <clears throat> George Papa Vadromo, 30 to 1 in the debut. Uh, brushed early, was in tight during that debut on March 5th. With it all in all, Kind of a, an even third. I thought it was a, an okay race for a debut. Uh, you know, I thought it was an excellent race from him only because he was on the inside. He really seemed to handle getting dirt in his face from the inside uh, trip that he got. And then he had that little bit of, you know, trouble in his race. And I, I think the fact that he, yes, Tiber was a runaway winner, a 1.7 million at auction and expected to, you know, be an, a very nice horse. And Mauritius was second, both those top two finishes out of the Baffert Barn, but he didn't finish that far behind Mauritius. So I thought it was a very strong race in a, what we could call a salty maiden for pioneering Papa. B Doc, we were just discussing, uh, coming by us right now for trainer Doug O'Neill just went by the three-year-old son of Gormley from the family of Malibu Moon. I mean, to me, when I see that, two turns, yes. Obviously, turf, yes. Basically, anything you want to do. Yeah, I was super saver on the bottom. You got some distance pedigree there, too, for B Dork. Um, I, you know, he's going to have to really step up from his uh, good race, which was at Santa Anita on the 31st of December. He's going to have to move forward from that race. But I, I do think that he's, you know, in with a shot here. I think the inside horses, the, the one and the two, uh, where the, the strength is. And then Devil Moon, this is a really interesting horse, Pete, because I loved him going into his debut. He had trained lights out in the morning. Richard ran him on the turf course, and he still appeared to me to be very mentally green. And when he, the trip that he had, he lost confidence when he got checked because he was really in the bridle up until that point. And then he just didn't seem to enjoy accelerating at the end of the race on the turf. He, his head came up and he was kind of going up and down. So I'm hoping that the switch in surface to dirt will get to see the horse with the talent that I've seen in the morning. From see, him. He had everything possibly go wrong in that February 25th race. Uh, right from the start. So I think he just you just got to put a line through it. He was well 
well meant by the public. So I think they were expecting good things that day. And I agree with you. I think obviously he has demonstrated with that 47 and one on the 12th and on the 19th of 59 and three, that the main track probably is what he wants. Yeah. He's a very big individual and he likes to get it on a little bit in the morning. When you watch him work, he's usually put on the outside of horses. And I think that's just because he is can be on the keen side and so to be bottled in in that position drawing an inside post for his debut i think made him a little bit cramped in there four horse go joe won the three-year-old ridgling a pron tonico from the giants causeway sign lineage for paula capestro paula takes her time with these horses has been working well down at San Luis Rey. Showed up, looks like to me, it was kind of like a little wake up 35 on March 17th. Yeah, and that's what it appears to me. She's trying to put a little bit of run on this Ridgeling's mind. Uh, he's got Giants Causeway in the pedigree more than ready. That suggests to me that he's probably going to be better on the turf course. My connection in front of us just there looks very, very relaxed and uh, tremendous. I mean, the coat is glistening right now. That's a horse that looks ready. The number one, yeah, high connection. He he did. The, he's got a huge hind end on him. He's a very stout individual, um, and he looked good coming over. As did pioneering Papa, the number two. Six horses, Royal Orr, browning out our group. Ricardo Ramirez, uh, with the assignment here for uh, Ruben Gomez. Horses, he's picked up some pieces here and there. That was going a mile. Now the cut back to six and a half. Not sure if that's what this horse wants to do. And we just got an opportunity to see Devil Moon going around on in the paddock there. He's got two handlers, one on either side. Because uh, I mentioned he's quite a high-energy horse, but he's behaving beautifully. And you can just see the size of him. He's a really nice, big colt. Newly turned gelding, Royal Orb, currently right now at 30 to 1, longest shot on the board. With the cutback in distance, uh, do you expect to see the horse forwardly placed? Do you think that's going to play against? I think the speed is going to be coming from these inside post positions today. So I think he will try and play the break, sit back, see how things unfold, and okay. try and pick up some pieces. Got a late run. hustling new apprentice rider, uh, Vince DeGregory is his agent. Yeah. Of course, Vince, uh, Uncle Vinny to most of us on the back stretch, is, has been known as the agent, the star maker over back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He would take guys that maybe you didn't know so much about, but by the end, if he was done, you knew them. Absolutely. Some Hall of Fame jockeys that he has produced. All right. Horses coming out on the track. Eight minutes to post. Race number two, 34,978. Good luck. Field heading onto the track for the second race, named Happy Birthday, Mary. Seven minutes to post. It's the start of the early pick four.
Zoe Cabman down here at the starting gate. I'm excited. Maiden races are my favorite kind of racing. That being said, let's talk about the current favorite right now. Trained by Bob Baffert. High connection looks great. He's all forest camp. He's out of a forest camp mare. He's typey. He's on point. He's certainly on his toes here, and he's going to show an awful lot of speed from the rail under Johnny V. So he is most definitely the horse to beat. However, I love the five Devil Moon. Now, a lot was made in his debut. He got in tight. He didn't like it. Things didn't go his way. But at the end of the day, I honestly don't believe he's a turf horse. His full brother, Magnum Moon, won four of five starts. He won his first four races all on dirt, culminating with the grade one Arkansas Derby. He did falter in the Kentucky Derby, but he was a true out and out dirt horse. And watching this horse work, he loves the dirt. I just think he was a bit confused in his turf start. He got in tight, didn't like it. He's behaved very, very well. This is going to be a riders race with me with Hall of Famer Mike Smith. I think he'll get out of the gate, keep this horse in the clear, and he will have the favorite pioneering papa in his sights the whole way throughout the race. I think it's Devil Moon's race to lose. And if he does, it's going to be very tight with high connection. It's post time. The horses have reached the starting gate. Royal Orb to the outside. They're in the gate, and they're off. Quick start for Devil Moon. Here's Pioneering Papa, high connection along the inside. Those two now go on with it. It's high connection and Pioneering Papa, stride for stride. B-Doc is in third, and on the outside of them comes Devil Moon, now reclaiming third, a gap of four, back to Go Joe One, who's three in front of Royal Orb. Half mile left to run. High Connection has a neck lead on Pioneering Papa. Then it's B-Doc in third. Devil Moon has to go four wide around the turn. A gap of five to go Joe One. Similar margin to Royal Orb. Three-eighths of a mile to run. It's High Connection. Now three-quarters of a length. Pioneering Papa has to keep pace. Hard ridden second. A length and a half. Devil Moon clearly third. Followed by B-Doc in fourth. And then go Joe One. They turn for home. High Connection hugs the rail and goes on. Pioneering Papa length back. Two more to Devil Moon in third. And now with an eighth to go, High Connection waves goodbye with big strides. Long gone is this firster. High Connection romping home. High Connection will win by about seven or eight when the smoke clears.
maybe more. Pioneering Papa second, B Doc third, then Double Moon and Gojo one, and a photo for fourth. One, High Connection was first. Two, a Pioneering Papa finished second. Three, B-Doc was third. Money time, 116.48. Fourth number five, Devil Moon. In the run happy winner circle is High Connection, a three year old chestnut colt by Connect out of Forest Legend. Owned by His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Michal Al Saad. The winning trainer is Bob Baffert and the jockey John Velasquez. High Connection was bred in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey Jr., makes his debut a winning one in 116.48 seconds. Congratulations to Hall of Famer Bob Baffert, who won the Dubai World Cup again today with Country Grammar. Second race named Happy Birthday, Mary. Up next, the third. Post time in 26 minutes, no changes. They're in the gate, and they're off. Quick start for Devil Moon. 
Here's Pioneering Papa, high connection along the inside. Those two now go on with it. It's high connection and Pioneering Papa, stride for stride. B-Doc is in third. And on the outside of them comes Devil Moon, now reclaiming third, a gap of four, back to Go Joe One, who's three in front of Royal Orb. Half mile left to run, High Connection has a neck lead on Pioneering Papa. Then it's B-Doc in third, Devil Moon has to go four wide around the turn, a gap of five to Go Joe One, similar margin to Royal Orb. Three eighths of a mile to run, it's High Connection, now three quarters of a length. Pioneering Papa asked to keep pace, hard ridden second. A length and a half, Devil Moon clearly third, followed by B Doc in fourth, and then go Joe one. They turn for home, high connection, hugs the rail and goes on. Pioneering Papa, length back. Two more to Devil Moon in third, and now with an eighth to go, high connection waves goodbye with big strides. Long gone is this firster, high connection, romping home. High connection will win by about seven or eight when the smoke clears, maybe more. Pioneering Papa second, B-Doc third, then Devil Moon and Gojo one and a photo for fourth. Run Happy, who was at number one second prop sire by Braden Stakes winners and earnings. Run Happy is represented by Smile Happy, the Kentucky Derby individual future pool favorite, a leading dirt sire, and now with an exciting Kentucky Derby hopeful called Bernie Sams now, and book your mare to Eclipse champion Run Happy right now. Run Happy standing in stall one at Claiborne Farm.
It's been kind of a rags to riches story for us. Veg racing, there was an opportunity for regular guys to own a racehorse. We watched Yes This Time in Delaware win with all the other Edge owners. It was a fantastic experience. We loved it. And it's become more of a family experience. When we win, everybody in our circle wins. You don't always get lucky right away, but to have a partnership and be a part of several different horses gives you a better opportunity for success. It's been a nice ride so far with Edge Racing and looking for a bright future. The racing action doesn't stop when the sun sets in the west. A half a world away in the land of winks, the action is just getting started. Full field, exciting turf racing, available on Express Bet and at Samulcast at racetracks throughout the country. Wink, wink, away she goes, the jab. Winks in a cakewalk.
15 minutes to post, race number three coming up a mile on the turf. Calbred, optional 50 non-winners of one other than allowance conditions. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, betting favorite, Ute, your honor, mm -hmm. for all of you fans of my cousin Vinny. Uh, <laughs> I knew I liked this horse, but I knew there was no way in the world we were getting three to one. Well, Ute, your honor, I think, has been really well campaigned by his trainer, Clifford Sice. Uh, he's three for five with one second. He's earned uh, over $100,000, and he looks the one to beat in here. Um, Medea, I think, on the outside of him will be the biggest threat to you, Your Honor, because he's he's just got some class. He brings some class. He also, like you, Your Honor, has earned over $100,000. So to me, these two stand out in this field, and you're getting six to five over a seven to one shot. Not too shabby. Five horse Emerald Lake for Ruben Alvarado. Horse was a winner of a debut mile on January 8th, showed up on February 11th uh, against this condition. It wasn't a bad race. Honestly, I just think that uh, they got hooked early, and uh, that usually doesn't work out when you're on the turf. Yeah, and, it, you know, he, he was given a month in between races, so I don't think it was a fact of him coming back too quick. But as you said, you know, every time you step up for maiden allowance, if you can win your maiden first time out, then you have some ability. But then to, to run and win against winners second time out is pretty tough to do, as you know. Absolutely. So he ran well enough. Uh, I think, you know, he gets Johnny V back on, who won him on in his debut. And uh, those two, I think they'll be, they'll be strong in him. Six horses smiling Eva. Evie, mm -hmm. a three-year-old daughter of Tom's tribute. I look at this horse and say, hmm, debut win, six furlongs, okay. Tried the optional 50 calibre condition on the dirt. Not bad. Second best was well clear of the third horse in that race, who, by the way, was you to your honor. Yeah, well, she's going to have to make up five lengths, right, to beat the favorite. Also, yeah, it's the turf, one, though. And the, and the positive is that she draws outside. Uh, you, your honor, was outside last time out, now is inside. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the benefit, I think, for him is he's got she's this filly's got tactical speed the favorite the rail is at zero feet today so it's not going to help her out like it would have yesterday okay. had she been entered with the rail at 30 feet so i think it gives it a little bit more of an even playing field but still i think uh you, your honor is in a in a really good spot here exactly wendy for the doug o'neill trainee gets the win Congratulations out to Team O'Neill, although not a winner of the Dubai World Club. As you pointed out, a very strong second with Hot Rod Charlie. That horse I, uh, seldom misses a meal, man. Oh, he is so consistent. He, he is so game and gritty. And that's what it was when you thought he was done. And he just finds another gear and up the rail as well. It's been amazing he, to watch. He always reminds me of a horse. And again, it's, you can't really compare the two. But what you just said about just when you think he's beat, he comes back. Yeah. That always reminds me of Tis Now. Oh, right. Tis Now is one of those type of horses. You know, and Chris McCarron said it. He said, you know, I'm paraphrasing. You know, when it, those back-to-back -back, uh, Breeders' Cup classics, when it looked like he was beat at the top of the stretch, he, he basically, paraphrasing, said it was like it wasn't me. It was all hard yeah. on that horse's part. Right. He did not want to lose. And that's something that a horse either comes with or they take. Yeah, you can't train it. <laughs> you usually can tell pretty early on. Yeah, you either got it or you don't. Yeah. Uh, there is Madaha, the... Uh, the two horse there, uh, homebred for Terry Lovinger and the Love Acres, three-year-old daughter of Shaman's Ghost you were just talking about. Last time out, tried the Arizona Oaks at a mile on the grass, on uh, the dirt rather, bumped at the break, but still it was a good effort all in all. Yeah, she's tried stakes company here and there, and uh, you can understand why. She'd be more valuable if she gets one of those stakes wins under her belt. Uh, she stakes multiple stakes placed already, uh, and that's why we talked about the class that she comes in with here. Exactly Wendy is one we haven't touched on. I just want to touch on her really quickly because I thought she ran a big race last time out. Every time she runs, she's been moving forward. Uh, she's already had two route races, which I think really helps when you're looking at some of these who are trying it either for the first time, you know, stretching out or even switching surfaces to do so. Uh, but uh, she'll have to, again, take that one more step forward, but it's feasible. Smiling Evie, I was just looking at, and it looked like I mean, she's not acting up. But she's definitely on the muscle. And I always think that's interesting when you see a horse that has two races already under the belt. 
Yeah, she's she looks very fit. She's actually as she walks around here. She's starting to settle down. Yeah. She settled. came into the ring and she was kind of kicking and snorting a little bit. She's feeling good, feeling her oats, as they say. I see cotton wool balls in the number in the ears of uh, number five, Emerald Lake, just trying to get her to relax and drone out the background noise. Ten minutes to post race number three. Good luck. Field heading onto the track for the third, named for Antoine Peterson's 55th birthday. Nine minutes to post. During the month of March at Yamava Resort and Casino at San Manuel, you can win a BMW M3 or up to $100,000 cash each Thursday. Enjoy over 6,500 slots, hundreds of exciting table games, a new hotel, and countless dining options. Yamava Resort and Casino at San Manuel.
Four minutes to post for this upcoming third race. Got a chance to see these girls warm up, and I just love the appearance of the one Ute, Your Honor. She seemed to take a bad step or slipped on the turf course last time out. She really looks tremendous. I thought she ran very, very well regarding the trouble that she had last time out. She's a beautiful looking filly. She's got a touch of elegance about her and she's warmed up very, very nicely with JJ Hernandez aboard her. Just really not giving her a strong warm up. She had a little jog, but just keeping her cool, calm and collected. And you to your honor is firmly the one to beat. As far as the five is concerned, she's a totally different filly. She was wallowing all over the pony. We're talking about Emerald Lake here with Johnny V looking for another winner on today's card. She's pretty pumped up. She's wearing her usual earplugs that she wears for trainer Ruben Alvarado. And she looks to me, judging by her body language, that she's going to show a little bit of speed. I know Johnny may have got some cover last time, but I don't see a whole lot of speed banked up on this race for today. So I think Emerald Lake is going to be close. She's pumped up, but I don't think she's running her race before the race, if you get what I mean. So Emerald Lake, I think he's going to have a good showing, but maybe a slightly different running style due to her body language. Emerald Lake and Ute, your honor. Just about two minutes to go to race number three. It's post time. Moving in for the third. Smiling heavy to the outside. They're in the gate, and they're off. Madiha and Precious inside out alertly. Emerald Lake, Smiling Evie. Smiling Evie now moves up on the outside. By the stands, and Smiling Evie up to take the lead. Madiha second, followed by Precious inside in third. Emerald Lake fourth. Exactly Wendy and Ute Your Honor at the back of the field. Six lengths covers them. As they round the first turn, Smile and Evie clears off to lead it by about a length and a half. Madiha second by the same margin. Precious inside third, just in front of Emerald Lake. Ute, Your Honor, inches a little bit closer, just three off the pace and three quarters to exactly Wendy. Down the back stretch they go. 
and it's smiling Evie by a head, pressed by Madiha. A length and a half, Precious inside, three wide in third as they pass the half-mile pole. Emerald Lake, Ute Your Honor is in some heavy traffic, steadying sharply there, and at the rail, it's exactly Wendy. Around the turn, smiling Evie maintains a head lead on Madiha second. Two more back to Precious inside in third. They're followed by Emerald Lake. Ute Your Honor, four off the lead, trying to re-rally while going wide now. And another two to exactly Wendy, top of the stretch. And Madiha runs by Smiling Evie. Ute Your Honor in the center of the course is finishing with interest. Emerald Lake inside of her. Madiha with a three-length lead. Ute Your Honor, giant performance on the outside. Ute Your Honor comes to Madiha. And Ute Your Honor deserved that victory. Madiha was second, Emerald Lake, and then it was exactly Wendy. One, Ute Your Honor was first. Two, Madiha second. Five, Emerald Lake ran third. And four, exactly Wendy fourth. One, two, five, four. Third is official. Rainbow pick six starts with the upcoming fourth. There's 46,000 in the jackpot pool for a single ticket winner. Post time in 27 minutes. In the run happy winner's circle is Ute Your Honor. Three year old Dark Bear Brown Philly by Dancing Candy out of Melanistic. Owned by Aroni, Hug, Henry et al. Trained by Cliff Seitz Jr. 
written by Juan Hernandez. Ute, Your Honor, was bred in California by Halo Farms. Running time, 136.45 seconds. Third name for Antoine Peterson's 55th birthday. They're in the gate, and they're off. Madiha and Precious inside out alertly. Emerald Lake, Smile and Evie. Smile and Evie now moves up on the outside. By the stands, and Smile and Evie up to take the lead. Madiha second, followed by Precious inside in third. Emerald Lake fourth. Exactly, Wendy and you, Your Honor, at the back of the field. Six lengths covers them as they round the first turn. Smile and Evie clears off to lead it by about a length and a half. Madiha second by the same margin. Precious inside third, just in front of Emerald Lake. You, Your Honor, inches a little bit closer, just three off the pace and three quarters to exactly Wendy. Down the back stretch they go, and it's Smile and Evie by a head, pressed by Madiha. A length and a half, Precious inside three wide in third as they pass the half-mile pole. Emerald Lake, Ute Your Honor is in some heavy traffic, steadying sharply there, and at the rail, it's exactly Wendy. Around the turn, Smile and Evie maintains a head lead on Madiha second. Two more back to Precious inside in third. They're followed by Emerald Lake, Ute Your Honor, four off the lead, trying to re-rally while going wide now. And another two to exactly Wendy, top of the stretch. And Madiha runs by Smile and Evie. Ute, Your Honor, in the center of the course is finishing with interest. Emerald Lake inside of her. Madiha with a three-length lead. Ute, Your Honor, giant performance on the outside. Ute, Your Honor, comes to Madiha. And Ute, Your Honor, deserved that victory. Madiha was second. Emerald Lake. And then it was exactly Wendy.
until you see it in person. If you hadn't seen nothing. There's nothing more gorgeous than sitting here in the morning when the sun's coming up. Yeah. Here we go. It's pretty amazing. Just the history. It's the great horses that we were as kids dreaming of. Nice ride. Sometimes the girls gotta be the boys. My partner right here, my ace. <laughs> the the oh, On a special Santa Anita, huh? Down the Scintillating performance from American Pharaoh. <laughs> To me, it's the most beautiful track in the world, and there's just no place like it.
Welcome back, everybody. 14 minutes to post race number four. Time for the rainbow pick six. And already that pool somewhere in the neighborhood, I'm thinking 114,000 in combined pool. That's not too shabby. More new money than what the carryover is, Pete. That's a good sign. It's a good sequence. I've actually got two singles on my ticket. We're both being a very aggressive. As you can look at it, your ticket in excess of $40, mine close to $25. And of course, our friends at AI, they go in the complete different direction. They said, no problem. I'll just put in uh, $4 and change and hit this thing. And they've got a horse in the last race that neither one, they're singling and neither one of us is using. And, you know, interestingly enough, Pete, as we walk through the sequence and we'll get to that last race, a single in a moment. But take a look at the odds board right now. Number four, Kalinga Road is the two to five current betting choice. I think I'm reading the wrong racing form. First of all, this is a five and a half sprint on the main track. There's not a whole lot of early speed. More importantly, Kalinga Road has had plenty of chances on the main track. Never emerged victorious coming back off a layoff. I don't know. I just don't like Kalinga Road at that price. I included the horse I did not use. Area code to me seems to be the horse horse uh, to beat. If you look at the works, the works usually are pretty solid. The last one, a 49.3, didn't look good, but according to Handicapper's report, strictly a maintenance stretch the legs in preparation for the race. Morning line of 5-2 to two and currently 5-1 to one on the board. I don't like area code. I love area code. I'm singling to kick off the pick six sequence here. Here's one of the reasons why, Pete, with, with the John Sadler barn, their last 12 dirt starters here at San Anita, 8 wins, 2 seconds and a third, 11 for 12 in the money. Incredible percentage statistically for the Sadler Barn with their dirt runners. No reason why area code can't improve to that impressive statistic. I highly doubt we're going to be five to one, but as I've done before, I will be looking at my first bet account and getting ready to make a sizable wager if it stays there. And way. Pete, uh, excuse me, but drawn outside, like I said, not a whole lot of early speed. I think area code's the one to beat because really the only pace contender is number five, stir the pot, drawn right inside of them. They're both big prices right now, like you said, likely to drop, but it sure seems like they're the controlling pace in the race. Fifth race, mile and eighth on the turf. Calbred optional 20s to me. I thought a price in the sixth. Big talker again. Uh, handicapper's report was checking out this morning. Uh, wore a figure eight. Uh, on the training track, was urged most of the way in that work on March 23rd. Three furlongs up, 34 and three. It was very fast, but it was also they were urging. So they were obviously looking for something. Big talker is a half to mooch you unusual, who, of course, we know was recently retired. Also a full to big score. Blinkers come off the long layoff. I'm also looking at a price in that race, Pete. Number nine, Jack Sixpack, a three-year-old taking on older, but has that good improving buyer speed figure pattern. Last time out, really came home very impressively. I think there's further room for improvement. Ten to one on the morning line. How about that sixth race? Maiden 40s going six and a half. To me, I think uh, Grand Course Guy looks like the horse to take a swing in. Good second. This horse has got speed, and as you were just talking about earlier, draws with a lot of speed the outside post to me that is a perfect strategic place to be completely agree Pete. being outside edwin malonado the jockey on grand concourse guy can figure out whether he wants to go to the front or maybe sit off the pace you don't have those options when 